Picture a supply chain that stretches out like a massive river system. At the very source, you'll find raw materials, the essential fuel that powers today's industries. As you follow the flow downstream, these resources move through factories, processing plants, and assembly lines until they finally land in the hands of the consumer. But let's make one thing clear. Real power isn't at the retail level. It's at the source. History has proven this time and time again. Wars aren't started over bakeries or store shelves stocked with packaged goods. They're launched over farmland, oil reserves, and rare minerals. Ask any military strategist, and they'll tell you, the side that controls the resources controls the entire game. So what happens when that control is threatened? Let's take oil as an example. Nations have risked everything, sending armies across borders just to gain access to oil fields. Why? Because without crude oil, refineries and gas stations are useless. The same logic applies to water rights, fishing territories, and today's critical rare earth minerals. It's a power struggle that's been part of human civilization since the beginning. And right now, China holds the upper hand in this battle. They dominate the production of many crucial materials the world depends on. This is exactly why sanctions on resource-rich nations often don't work as intended. It's not just about political tactics, it's about economic reality, and it affects everyday consumers too. Take the current sanctions against Russia, for instance. Despite massive restrictions, Russia's natural resource exports are still keeping its economy afloat. Likewise, the United States-China chip war has run into some major obstacles. The United States tried to cut China off from advanced semiconductor chips, directly targeting companies like Huawei. But here's the catch. Those sanctions only deal with the finished products, not the raw materials needed to make them. And that's a huge oversight because China controls many of those raw resources. Now consider how this trickles down to you. Think about the next smartphone you'll buy, or the price of your future electric car. Take gallium, for example. Not long ago, hardly anyone outside the tech world had even heard of this metal. But for industry insiders, gallium is absolutely critical. It's used to create gallium nitride, a material essential for telecommunications and next generation semiconductors. So when the United States tightened restrictions on chip technology, China struck back by banning exports of gallium. This decision sent shockwaves through industries worldwide because China currently controls about 95 to 98 percent of the global gallium supply. But what does this really mean for innovation and global competition? And why should we care? Gallium nitride is a game changer, especially in telecommunications and 5G networks. Huawei, one of the main targets of U.S. chip sanctions, uses gallium nitride to build 5G equipment that's not only lighter, but also more energy efficient and cheaper to deploy compared to its rivals. For example, Huawei's equipment needs fewer cooling systems and uses lighter support poles, cutting down both installation and maintenance costs. This directly lowers the cost of expanding 5G networks, making high-speed internet more accessible to consumers around the world. On the other hand, companies like Ericsson and Nokia are struggling to match Huawei's efficiency, giving the Chinese tech giant a significant lead in the global market. China's dominance over gallium is no accident. It's directly linked to the country's massive control of aluminum production, where gallium is commonly extracted as a byproduct. This isn't something that happened overnight. For decades, China has made strategic investments, building an industrial advantage that now allows it to produce over half of the world's aluminum. And naturally, this dominance has spilled over into gallium production as well. If you compare gallium output around the world, the chart looks shocking. China's production isn't just leading, it's overwhelming. Imagine a graph where one country's bar shoots straight up like a skyscraper, while everyone else's barely rises from the ground. That's the current state of global gallium supply. According to CSIS, China controls more than 98% of the world's raw gallium output. This dependency isn't just a trade issue. It's a threat to innovation and national security. Take the semiconductor industry, for example. Advanced chips, the ones used in smartphones, data centers, satellites, and even fighter jets, depend on gallium wafers. Without a steady and reliable gallium supply, chip makers face serious bottlenecks. Production slows down, costs go up, and the development of new technologies risks grinding to a halt. But the impact doesn't stop with electronics. Clean energy is also at risk. Technologies like solar panels, wind turbines, and next-generation batteries often require gallium-based materials to increase their efficiency, durability, and performance. This raises a worrying question. 
Could the world's push for renewable energy be slowed down because of one single supply chain issue? There's another layer to this challenge, Huawei. The Chinese tech giant isn't just leading in hardware, it's also becoming a global leader in gallium technology. Right now, Huawei owns over 2,000 patents related to gallium innovations, giving it a major edge in both research and development. By comparison, American companies are lagging far behind, not just in patent ownership, but also in access to raw materials and the ability to compete technologically. This growing gap raises uncomfortable questions for the United States and its partners. How can America compete in advanced tech when it's so dependent on China for critical resources like gallium? What does this mean for the future of global tech leadership? And the most critical question of all, what happens if China decides to restrict gallium exports even further? Right now, the United States government is focused on winning the chip war, but there's a serious problem. Policy is not matching reality. Politicians talk about making more chips at home, but they rarely address the raw materials needed to do it. Without control over the gallium supply chain, the whole strategy could collapse. In short, this isn't just a supply chain issue. It's a geopolitical risk, a tech race dilemma, and potentially a national security crisis rolled into one. Restricting chip exports to China without securing the raw material supply chain is like trying to stop a river's flow downstream while ignoring the source upstream. It's a critical mistake, a strategic oversight that could have serious long-term consequences. The big question is, did policymakers underestimate China's ability to use its control over resources as a weapon? Or did they simply assume China wouldn't retaliate? Either way, these assumptions may have set the stage for a new global power shift, one that could define technology, economics, and geopolitics for decades. When China decided to ban exports of rare earth metals and other essential materials, it wasn't just an act of retaliation, it was a bold statement. It sent shockwaves through Western industries and governments, exposing just how fragile and vulnerable the global supply chain really is. This tit-for-tat move revealed something fundamental. Control over raw materials equals control over the global economy. Let's break it down simply. If the United States says to China, we won't sell you our most advanced microchips, China can simply respond fine, but we won't sell you the rare materials you need to make those chips in the first place. And just like that, the balance of power begins to shift. This isn't just about political gamesmanship. The ripple effects go much deeper. Industries across the world, from smartphones to electric vehicles, from defense systems to renewable energy, are all at risk. The global economy is tied to the availability of these critical resources. If one major supplier cuts off the flow, the consequences are massive. But here's the problem. Progress has been painfully slow. Setting up alternative sources for materials like gallium isn't something you can do in a few months. It requires years of research, massive investments, new technology, and large-scale infrastructure development. And while the West struggles to catch up, China's dominance remains virtually unchallenged. This raises another crucial question. Could this delay permanently damage America's technological progress? Right now, the so-called chip war has revealed one of the biggest vulnerabilities in the modern global economy, our dependence on a single nation for the raw materials that make technology possible. So where does this leave us? As countries around the world scramble to secure their futures, the issue isn't just about competition anymore, it's about innovation, resilience, and survival. Because in today's world, it's no longer just about who makes the best products, it's about who controls the ingredients. Whoever controls the raw materials controls the future. The stakes are higher than ever, and the price of inaction could be catastrophic. Not just for governments, but for entire industries and everyday consumers around the world. But perhaps the most urgent question of all is, are we prepared for what comes next? If you're enjoying this video, make sure to like and subscribe to stay updated on stories like this. And don't miss the next video that's now on your screen. It's packed with insights you won't want to miss.